Hey, beautiful humans. Thank you for joining me on another episode here on Creative Street. Um, This is episode 11. It's crazy. Uh, today, I'm rocking UF Gators. What? Um, it's an interesting, it's going to be an interesting episode. We are also getting close to the holiday season. So before I get into the, the episode, I just want to give you all a uh, major thank you again for tuning in, for listening, um, and for just making me a part of your day, making me a part of your life. Um, yeah, <laughs> let's have an awesome uh, episode and um, ow, Simba. So Simba really wants attention. Um, he's been nibbling at my feet every now and then so I'm sorry if it like takes me off track it really hurts because he doesn't bite to actually hurt me he just he nibbles at me like saying hey play with me or like I want attention and who the fuck are you talking to you crazy psycho <laughs> but anyways um okay so to get into the nitty-gritty of things um Today's episode is about good and evil. And that topic is, I'm going to get very philosophical with it. Um, however, I do want to say that I respect everybody's morals. Um, everybody has moral compasses uh, that are that are different, their cultural beliefs, their religious beliefs, um, and, you know, social cultural norms that may not coincide with other people's may not coincide with mine but I'm just going to talk about it from my perspective and I you could either resonate and leave me a comment tell me yes on you know like I agree or um leave me something and just be like nah be <laughs> um okay so the relationship between good and evil is a philosophical topic that has been around for a very, very, very long time. Uh, since I believe, like, even in the Greek era, I'm um, trying to figure out what, where is the line, right? Um, and I think we've learned throughout time, um, and especially within our generation now, that evil and good, like, the line isn't, a set line like it's not always this black and white thing um the line has shifted throughout time right so what was evil in the past is not necessarily evil now and let me define evil evil is in terms of this um this negativity this this thing that goes against that you know we associate with like killing with lying cheating something that is uh, I, I'm not a philosopher so I don't know how to give you the best form of the defining this but I like to think of it something that goes against like some moral some this this like high standard that we want to keep ourselves at um, as humans just like vice versa good is like this virtuous thing something that we aspire for right honesty uh, camaraderie um, you know living um, decent like decently whatever that means um, to kind of have it better said uh, Ralph Waldo Emerson and his um in his essay, Self-Reliance, um, I'm going to just read a quick uh, excerpt. Good and bad are but names, very readily transferable to this or that. The only right is what is after my constitution. The only wrong is what is against it. Virtues are in the popular estimate, rather the exception than the rule. There is the man and his virtues, Men do what is called a good action as some piece of courage or charity, much as they would pay a fine in expiation of daily non-appearance on parade. All of that to say that 
really good and bad is based on your perspective, right? What you perceive as something as good is, was it, did it benefit you? Was it good for you because it, it coincides with your virtues, with your values? Or is it bad because it affected you in a negative way? Or was it bad because it went against your moral values? And like I mentioned, that line, as a society, it shifts, right? Give you a very easy, clear-cut example. Slavery in the past, slavery in the past was a good thing. It was normalized. Nowadays, it is not. Actually, personally, it was never okay. But in the past, different perspective, different values. It's a whole different mindset. Um, obviously, now, not okay. Not cool. Um, and yeah, bad. So, okay. So this episode in relationship to creativity... I wanted to get into the topic of when a creative is making something, right? When we're in the act of discovering and when and when we're in the act of curiosity, creatives are very curious. It's what makes us creative. Creativity is literally the, it, it goes hand in hand with curiosity. It's being open and curious about how things will will manifest, will become, if you say this specific word, if you add this specific item to it, if you play around with it in some unique way and you make something, you're being creative. And within that act of creativity, you are being curious. As the person, you're experiencing curiosity while you're doing a creative act. And so that's, in that mindset right when you're being curious at times and i'm not to say that everybody has a great intention because humans i love you guys but at the same time we're rough okay we're rough around the edges um when you're when you're creating something not all the time do you have an intention behind it um sometimes things just become, or you're being curious and then you find, or you discover something by accident. Um, one of the most like popular examples is, um, and like the most famous example is Alexander Fleming, um, discovering penicillin, penicillin by accident. Um, uh, honestly, he was studying bacteria, um, uh, and he just wanted to go on vacation didn't feel like doing the dishes, the petri, like washing the petri dishes, uh, petri dishes. And he came back after, um, after his vacation, started cleaning them, and then noticed that one of them actually had mold. And then there was an area around the mold where the bacteria wasn't growing. Hence, penicillin was discovered. That one, that one's not necessarily creative, but he was, the whole reason he had the petri dishes in his lab was because he was curious about bacteria and you know um i think he was doing like a specific study with some sort of bacteria i don't know the details i will put it in the show notes um, for anybody that's curious to uh, read up a little bit more on alexander fleming and, and that discovery but getting back to the point there are things that we discover in our acts of creativity and our, our acts of curiosity that are beneficial um either beneficial as a person like as an individual or within society um within the history of species right so obviously penicillin has saved many lives um and is you know and is given as like a as like a an antibacterial shot um but there are discoveries that they're used for an evil intention. And I'll give you another example. Um, so this one I actually discovered when I was uh, researching for this episode. And I came across this um, Jewish scientist um, named Fritz, Fritz Haber. 
Uh, he won a Nobel Prize um, because he created this nitrogen fertilizer, um, specifically um, this insecticide called Zyklon B um, that he used to fumigate uh, grain stores, right? Uh, so it was to like make sure that the this food that was harvested um, didn't go bad. It didn't get eaten by bugs and stuff like that. And, you know, that, that helps in terms of world hunger, right? Making sure that we are being able to sustain our families, ourselves, our society with ample food. Sorry. Um, turns out that and it's ironic. It wasn't the intention. His intention was to make sure that there was there was food. That the food didn't go bad. It didn't get eaten by bugs. But it turns out that that became the favorite method, like the favorite gas used um, for the gas chambers during the Holocaust, which ended up killing 1.2 million people. So that being said, like, you can see that there's a fine line, right? There's a fine line between when you're creating something and you want it to be good with a good intention and then somebody else comes in and sees the potential. Um, not saying it's a good potential, but sees the potential of its use and then uses it for something evil. Because I, I think most of us, if not all of us, can agree that what happened um, and the Holocaust during the Holocaust was was a very evil act. It was, it's not okay. It's not okay to hurt humans, uh, to hurt one another, manipulate one another. Um, and yeah, so so that that's another example of like of this this fine line that we walk as that we walk in as creatives um, when you're making something when you're when you're tinkering with things when you're obviously um you know some things are more are more um prominent than others right where you can see the bad in it but there are others that are that aren't right when you're making a work of art sometimes you're not thinking how this can negatively impact others because you're thinking oh this is such a great piece or this is such a powerful piece this is such a a piece that will inspire others and it may be that there's there is a there's a piece that you missed or that you didn't think through which is normal because we're humans and we can't know everything we don't know everything um we're not in other people's cultures we're not in uh, like all backgrounds of society we don't understand every language so we can't understand all the things that exist within the human realm so you don't know if that work of art that you think is going to inspire and going to motivate and be powerful actually ends up doing more harm than good. It ends up um it ends up becoming an e- like a a piece that propagates some sort of rebellion that then leads to deaths or that leads to chaos is that doesn't benefit anybody except the people in power. Um, not to say that we should stop ourselves from creating something if we, just because people are going to use it for ill intent. Like, I don't think, so there's a, the reason this this episode number one is one of my favorites but it also like it came up for me i was watching uh one piece i love one piece luffy chan um there's an episode where when they were in uh water i think it's watergate seven where they find frankie and um it goes into frankie's backstory and frankie is a boat builder he's um a son of a pirate that was left on this island orphaned and he literally lived at the shore um dirty and 
all he did was create boats and like really cool ships off of all the garbage that because he he lived in the poor part of the of the land he didn't have money or anything like that so he rummaged and he used the materials that were in the waste part of um of the island to build new ships and it turns out um in the in the episode and this spoiler alert if you haven't watched uh one piece spoil alert okay um and especially if you haven't watched that season there's a part where the navy takes his ships because they they want to kill um this fish man that helped uh the king of the pirates goldie roger he created goldie roger's ship um and then the navy took frankie's ships and they used it to destroy the city the city that um frankie now lived in with his master which is that ship builder um i forget his name but it was him and another um another orphan um kid that they became um apprentices um and and they they took his ships and they destroyed the city and they put him on trial the navy put this poor little boy on trial and they were like you built ships you built pirate ships that destroyed the city it's your fault so you're gonna hang um and his master again i forget his name he came out and and he was like trying to go to he's trying to save frankie and at one point frankie disowns the ship he says i wish i'd never built them and his master came out and punched him straight in the face and he said no that's not fair no matter how the ship was used for regardless of whether it's a pirate ship or a navy ship regardless of how it's used a a creator should never be ashamed of their creation it's not it wasn't his intention point being it wasn't frankie's intention for the ships to be used to destroy the city that he was growing up in that he had worked very hard to you know with his his colleagues to rebuild it it wasn't his fault it was their fault but he built the ship so he felt guilty he felt responsible and so that's what i'm trying to get at although our creatives our our, our creations can walk that fine line between good and evil they're they're neither context is given by us perspective is given by us use and action is our decision a creation needs to exist when you're inspired to make something don't stop yourself because you think it's going to be used in the wrong way or it's going to interpret it the wrong way your responsibility as a creator if that's your vision you make it whether it's a song that nobody's going to like or they're not going to agree with or a poster that nobody's going to like or they're not going to agree with or whatever it is whatever it may be how it's used once it's done is out of your hands you made it so that it's part of this world you can't hold yourself responsible for every single way that somebody's going to use your stuff because the reality is we're all creative whether we make something or we give something else a new use a new way of using it a new medium that is the act of creativity is also reshaping remolding reusing something in a new way and that's out of your hands um i did want to give another example of that um so Marcus Oliphant, Oliphant, 
I may not say that right. He was curious in the discovery of the nucleus of an atom, right? He was curious on how that nucleus, what the relationship was, how was it constructed, what um, what was the structure of it, and he he learned that nucleus have these heavy hydrogen atoms in it um uh and or rather he discovered heavy hydrogen atoms um not necessarily within the nucleus because it's chemistry um but these heavy hydrogen atoms he learned that they react with one another years later after his discovery um and this is like i said a prime example of how creativity and curiosity walk this really thin line between good and evil because he was just he was just curious he just wanted to know the chemistry of the world one thing i have learned is that in every discipline right so psychologists see the world in one way biologists see the world in another way chemists see the world in relationship to chemistry how atoms correlate and interact with one another and to them the human body is a bunch of chemicals reacting right for a biologist it's not just the chemicals and the vitamins and the minerals reacting but it's it's um our lever functions, right? Like our arms and and the blood. And it, it's a different physiological type of um, relationship and, and perspective. For psychologists, it's we're the mind, right? And point being, years later, this American scientist um, called Edward Teller, he, he learned about Marcus's discovery and that relationship and how they interact with each other. <laughs> and this man was like, we can use that. And he created the first hydrogen bomb, which uh, obviously was used and it killed many people. Um, and, and at that point, he brought the world, the human society, to a different level, a different um, level of, ex- of, of a, a different playing field. Because now you have mass, like bombs of mass destruction. Now you can kill millions, billions, and maybe destroy this planet altogether with just one hydrogen um with a hydrogen atom reaction that marcus discovered out of just curiosity again used for evil um but definitely important for us to understand that that relationship and and the reason that he was looking into that is because they see the world chemists see the world in a chemical perspective and for you to do that and for you to explore and see if there is life on other planets and all of that you got to understand chemistry chemistry is so important even like for energy right so that we can power our homes power these computers Uh, this webcam and this mic that I'm using to talk to you all. Like all of that requires power and some uh, version of getting power is through nuclear reactions. And what the hydrogen bomb is, is nuclear reactions. So anyways, all to say that creativity as creatives, as creators, we walk this weird line between good and evil. And 
I don't think that we're all good. I also don't think we're all evil. I think we're just humans trying to exist in whatever context we're in because all of us are living different contexts, right? Some of us are sisters. Some of us are brothers. Some of us are single children. Some of us are parents, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Um, and there's so many ways that we relate to this world. There's so many limitations that we have as a society. So as a creator, when you're creating something, um, make it, make it, don't look back. People are, are going to want to twist your words, twist your context, um, and they're going to get creative with what you made with your own creativity. It's just, it just is. I mean, look at the memes. <laughs> memes are just exactly that. Somebody's content recreated to fit another context. Um, I did want to also point out, <laughs> and these are more like of the creepy ones. If you never caught my Halloween mini showed, um, there was there was a couple that I was like, oh, I need to I need to bring this in because like I mentioned, it's not necessarily good nor evil. Like for the instance, the anthropodermic um bibliopegy. Peggy? Mm. So anthropodermic bibliopegy is book binding with human skin. So there would be prisoners that, um, so different context, uh, some prisoners, it was issued as a punishment where they would skin them alive. And then they'd like, they'd write their, the trial for that person in a book in some pages. And then after the skinning, they would use that person's skin to bind the book of their trial case. Wild. Um, but then there was other people that they were dying or, um, there was this one scientist who worked at one of like these mental facilities and he would torture some of these females and some of these females would die. And so he, he wrote all his experiments and stuff in this book. And then, um, he would get their skin, like the, the skin of the dead females and like would bind his different research papers and works in his subject's skin. Um, it was pretty wild to read. So definitely check out the Halloween mini-sode. Um, it has references to that. And, oh, and there's also the reference. So Vladimir uh, Petrovic Demikov is actually pretty famous. He is known as the father of the heart transplant and the lung transplant. Um, however, how he was able to do that for humans was through experimenting on dogs. And so what he would do, um, so again, that thin line of good and evil. If he hadn't done these, what I consider are evil experiments, because like, bro, Oh my God. Um, he would, and these dogs would last for like a month or two. Um, he would cut off the head of one dog and sew it onto the other. Um, damn, I should have gave you guys a warning. I'm sorry. Uh, please stop listening. Um, at least skip forward like five minutes. Um, if you don't want to hear this. Oh, I got to sneeze. Sorry. Um, okay. So I'm going to start again. So Vladimir Petrikov, uh, Demi oh, Petrovic Demikov. He, um, like I mentioned, was a the father of the heart and lung transplant. The way he discovered it was by cutting the head off of one dog and transplanting, uh, transplanting it onto the neck of another. And so he would make a two-headed dog. And some of these dogs, they lasted days. 
there were other dogs that lasted like a month. Uh, and it was, it was intense. And like, if you look up online, like the different pictures, it's rough. Anybody who loves animals, like, uh, it's rough to, to kind of witness. Um, however, again, walking a thin line because that's horrendous. However, how many people has, um, the heart and lung transplant, um, procedure that he was able to discover due to these surgeries, um, and these experiments, like how many people has it already saved? How many people's lives has it extended? Um, and has opened like the field to improvement and longevity and just humans, um, and, and implants and stuff. Um, not to say that we, we should live a long time. I don't, uh, that's a conversation for another time. Um, but anyways, point being creators, we're not good. We're not evil. Our creations are not good, not evil our job to make it it's the world's job to see how it will be used um and yeah and that's how you'll make your impact and that's all i got for today i wanted to just talk about that because i thought it was like a really cool um conversation to have interesting perspectives um, and like I mentioned, I saw that episode on One Piece. Um, I'm caught up, by the way, all the way to the end. It has been amazing arc. Um, but I had recently started rewatching it. And when I got to Frankie's season, I, I just, it, it, it got me. So I thought it would be a great conversation to have um, using that example. Um, and yeah. So thank you again for listening. Um, If you've been enjoying my podcast um, or you like this episode, hit like, hit subscribe, hit the little bell button thing um, to just like, you know, get reminders and stuff. Uh, I appreciate you always for tuning in. Um, Yeah, next week I have a guest i don't know if you've picked up on the structure of the of the shows this far but i am trying to get into 30 minutes with me uh one week and then the next week it'll be a guest and then back to me and so on um and then mini sods um if you're liking uh the mini sods it'd be cool to let me know if not i mean that's fine too um <laughs> I make the mini sods to highlight just cool different artists, different perspectives. Um, as much as I make these podcast episodes for you all, I also make them for myself. Uh, for myself, and it's been a journey. I'm learning. I am growing as a person, and you know, practicing. Uh, my communication skills and articulating myself a little bit better. So I appreciate your patience as you watch me grow um, and I interact with you all. And yeah, uh, again, thank you for tuning in. I appreciate your time. Um, the holidays are coming up. I'm super excited about that. And yeah, uh, have an awesome rest of your Wednesday, everyone. Bye. Stay creative.